This video is about making your own simple steam engine and boat, which is known variously as a putt-putt or pop-pop boat. But first an introduction. These middle school students are testing out their putt-putt boats. They made the engine from a recycled aluminum soft drink can. First they cut up the cans. Then they flattened and folded them into a double-sided rectangular shape that was closed off on three of the four sides. They stuck straws in the engine to give it a three-dimensional shape which they held with a two-part mixed-up epoxy glue. Later, they used the same glue to hold the straws in and seal the engine. They made a cardboard forming tool with which they bent and glued the straws so they could test out the engines before installing them in the boat. Then they decided whether to make a quick and simple boat out of a foam grocery tray or make a boat haul out of a milk or juice carton. They can even make a boat top so it really looks like a boat and it can be painted and colored. When you make a project like this, it's something you can be proud of. You won't have bought it in a store. You'll have made it with your own hands. And if you can take trash and transform it into a fully functioning steamboat, what isn't possible? I need a candle. Oh, babe. There it goes. I first encountered putt-putt boats in the verdant South Asian country of Bangladesh in the 1980s. I was working as an engineer for a development organization. When I was there decades ago, the country was not industrialized, so it was like stepping back in a time machine. You couldn't go far in Bangladesh without hitting water in the form of a pond, canal, rice field, or river. As in the days of Mark Twain, Life revolved around rivers. In Bangladesh, we really traveled on river boats. So it was in this poor country of smart, hard-working people that I discovered the coolest science toy I'd ever seen. And I learned so much from the people there about how to use ingenuity to make the most of what little is available. That's why there's a slideshow about Bangladesh on my Science Toy Maker website. I had to leave before I could meet the craftspeople who actually made the boats, but it was clear most of it was made from recycled tin cans. Here's one of the pop-pop boats from Bangladesh, rusted after all these decades. I lost the original oil lamp, so I made one out of aluminum foil, cotton string, and a few drops of vegetable oil. It still works. Here's some historical perspective about steam engines and putt-putts. Starting in the 1700s, inventors started harnessing the power of steam first using atmospheric pressure to pump water out of underground mines. In the 1800s, improved steam engines powered factories, trains, and boats. In the 1850s, a young Samuel Clemens 
who would later become a famous author known by his pen name of Mark Twain, piloted a steamboat on the Mississippi River. The history of pop-pop engines starts with a French man, Désiré Thomas Pio. Apologies for the pronunciation, or lack thereof. He immigrated to England with his wife, who worked as a dressmaker for Queen Victoria. But Pio invented. In 1891, he patented the first pop-pop toy boat. He replaced pistons, cylinders, and complicated valves with an ingenious harnessing of Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion. That's why studying the pop-pop engine cycle is a fun way to learn about physics. The steam-powered boats were a hit in Europe and the United States in the following decades, even though they were silent. In 1920, an American, William Purcell, used coiled tubing for the engine. That remains a popular style for do-it-yourself builders, and I have links on my website to instructions for making them. In 1916, American Charles McHugh invented the idea of a flexible diaphragm usually thin brass, on the top of the boiler that would make a satisfying motor sound. And it went faster to boot. Here's an engine I bought by itself. Even if you just blow into the pipe, it makes a noise. This form, a small boiler with a flexible top and two long pipes, is still the most common pop-pop engine. Mass production techniques made the boats popular throughout the world in the first half of the 20th century. But after World War II, the flame-powered engines were supplanted by battery-powered electric motor model boats. Pop Pops seem to survive only in poor countries like Bangladesh, where I first saw them. But now, I'm happy to say there's a huge resurgence of interest in Pop Pop boats everywhere. Suddenly I see them in all the science education catalogs. I bought old ones and new ones on the internet. Here's the oldest Pop Pop boat I have. It was manufactured in Japan. As with all Pop Pop boats, you have to prime it with water. The steam comes from water in the engine. Here's one from India. The frugal South Asian Pop Pops are usually powered with vegetable oil. Here's another cute pop-pop tugboat, also from India. Here's the finest boat I have, a handcrafted rose boat from South Africa.